Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the SJSU School of Library and Information Science Career Colloquia session. This is Jill Cleese, and I'm the career consultant for our SLIS students and alumni, and I'd like to thank each of you for joining us in our discussion on translating your LIS skills. We have Virginia Sanchez with us tonight, and she will be sharing her journey of translating her LIS skills from an information professional to an intelligence analyst. So it's all yours, Virginia. Take it away. Good evening, everyone. I am so honored to be invited uh, to present this evening, and I hope that everyone can hear me all right. All right. This is called Information Professional to Intelligence Analyst, Translating Your LIS Skills. And my name is Virginia Sanchez, hello, and I am a librarian. I'm also a reports officer with the Department of Homeland Security, Immigration, Customs Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations. How do you like that? All right. It's important to follow your passion. While some might think that my starting off as a gymnast and becoming a dancer, and then a martial arts practitioner, doing street patrols with the Guardian Angels, riding Harleys, joining the Navy Reserve and doing a tour in Afghanistan, becoming a librarian, and then transitioning to a job where I don't have to sit on the floor and I can wear improbable shoes, to owning a home and uh, also having uh, becoming a crazy cat lady with a pet boyfriend. Um, you know, all of these things are, are, are doable, possible. You know, you'll see in my very last slide why I really wanted to make an emphasis to follow your passion and because somebody else might say, you know what, you're wandering without a clue. As long as you're following your passion and what I call doing good things for other people, it's all good. And remember, you know, there's all sorts of untoward benefits, untold benefits that might come to you by following that passion, like being a mile away from somebody and having his shoes. All right, I started off in my library land career. Um, I was told to, to talk about how I got to where I am now. As a volunteer, I was 12 years old, and I started filing, shelving, setting up books, uh, setting up book displays, and uh, assisting with the summer reading program. And this was a great beginning networking opportunity. When I came back as a page, the librarians remembered me. They remembered me as one of their library kids and uh, they were more inclined to give me more responsibilities. So looking at things that are going to put you forward, put you one step ahead, allow you to hit the ground running, boots on ground as it were, you know, I started learning sorting, filing, the computer. Um, I demonstrated that I could do uh, follow oral written instructions. And for those of you who logged in early, I said to look on USA Jobs and Investigative, Anal uh, investigative Assistant you'll see that all of these things will come into play as you start your journey into federal employment. Okay, next I became a clerk with the city. I've also been a library assistant at the county level. I've been a library technical assistant at the state level. And all of these different experiences, the translatable skills built on each other toward putting me at the head of the pack in competition with my peers. You know, keeping track of those patron records, keeping track of uh, the databases, all these sort of things. Uh, and just so you know, I call databases like rental cars. As long as you can figure out where the lights are, where the windshield wipers are, and how to work the gas cap, you are good to go, right? Databases. And then we get into what the librarians ultimately do. I thought I would share this light moment of humor here before we go on to just what is a librarian. And for those of you who say, oh, that must, what do you need a master's degree for that? Or it must be great that you get to sit and read all day. Um, look, look at the, the, the major information systems handling that we do. We, we locate and secure information. We help people find it. I, a lot of times when the internet first came out, I called it the great sock drawer with unpaired socks. Yeah, you've got that great pair of socks in there, but unless somebody is in there to organize it, you can't find it, right? So. Um, we assist people in finding things easily, and, and you, as you enter the world of federal service and uh, being an assistant, uh, what do you call it, an intelligence research specialist, a research analyst, an intelligence specialist, these skills have come into handy time after time after time because I'm used to helping patrons and colleagues. I'm frequently called in to train my peers, which again gets me called in those special assignments. I'm working on a lot of interesting things right now. All right. 
So this, I call this the random and actual recent posting. This is for a law degree, but notice the translatable skills. Can you communicate with your customers? Can you write? Can you multitask, or as I like to call it, multi-spaz? It's all very important. All right, I wanted to share this. I entered the Navy in 1999, pre-9-11, as a yeoman. And look at these general duties. You organize files, you do typing, you operate office equipment, and you keep everything organized, the distribution's flowing. How perfect a fit is this for library people? And so I encourage people to think about if you want to look at the Montgomery GI Bill, by entering the military to help pay for your higher education, if you're going to do that and you decide to go Navy, look at the yeoman rating. I had a great time as a yeoman. It was so perfect with my library skills. And um, I thought I would share this little bit of humor. This is one of the very first yeoman back World War I, and then the future yeoman. Yeoman Rand, you know, the red shirt that gets beamed down to the planet for no apparent reason. And I really liked this early 1945 description of what a yeoman does. And can we not translate that into librarianship with all of the things that we do with budgets and, and collection development and all, and all of this sort of thing? Again, if you're looking for a way to not only get your foot in the door, uh, educational, but the military background is often a big plus for uh, getting into law enforcement and uh, federal service. All right, next. Now, military intelligence. Uh, it is not quite as glamorous and gritty as you can see by this slide, unlike librarianship, which is very gritty. <laughs> and people don't realize it. Um, I actually am working four jobs right now, one as a Navy Reservist, one as a reports officer for Homeland Security, one as a part-time librarian at Long Beach Public Library, and one as a consultant librarian for a nonprofit where I'm doing all their cataloging. And yes, very gritty, very boots on ground and hands on. All right, after I uh, was a yeoman, I transitioned, or what we call cross rate in the Navy, as, to intelligence specialist. And this was at Fort Huachuca, the home of military intelligence. And this is where um, I started my journey to Afghanistan. And you can probably find me on the short one with the really huge grin. This is very exciting. My uniform was still clean, relatively dust free. All right. Now, there's different titles that have the same translatable skills just within librarianship, where you can be a law librarian, a consumer health librarian. But there's all sorts of translatable skills. So I want you to bear in mind that one of the titles that you can research is intelligence analyst. And look at these skills. Again, we have the oral and written communication, the researching. We've got the knowledge of databases, all of these things. I mean, take a gander at that and tell me what is it about this that you don't already do as a library or information professional, right? This is where I'm currently employed, Homeland Security Investigations. That's pretty cool, huh? How glamorous is that? Okay, an intelligence officer, we collect, analyze, share strategic and tactical data. What does that mean? Let's think about when you're analyzing foot pattern, foot traffic in the library. Let's think about when you are preparing a report for the city council to justify your library's existence. When you, you keep track of who are your users, what kind of information do they ask for, what format do they ask for, how do you package that for their users. You are collecting data and you're analyzing it and preparing it for your user. You're already doing that. So bear that in mind when you're filling out or creating a new resume specific for these kinds of jobs. All right, so where do you look? All right, I want to share with you, this is right out of my own email box where I subscribe to these different job search um, opportunities. I'm on LinkedIn, so you see my alma mater, University of Arizona, right there. And look at how many jobs are listed, three jobs on LinkedIn. And another LinkedIn, Job Skills for Future Library Careers Group. And then clearancejob.com, for those of you with the clearance, and a lot of times, again, with the military is a way to get that clearance. It's not the only way, but it's the way I did it. USA Jobs, this is the, the place to go for federal employment. And do look at the um, internships, 
do look at, if you're on the Google groups, the Federal Careers Google groups, lots of opportunities to get your foot in the door there. Uh, one that's specifically for the Navy, Navy jobs. Again, that was through networking. That was through a colleague that told me about this. You want to network. Stay in touch with folks. Um, and again, for the military, hiring your heroes. And good old careerbearloop.com. That's like monster.com. It's a great way to find out and set up your profile for the kinds of things you're looking for. I think I've got three different profiles on there. And what's the one that's not showing up here? Uh, Indeed. Indeed.com. I've got that one set up for both analyst position and for librarian position. You don't want to sell yourself short or cut yourself out of the loop. All right, clearancejobs.com. I mentioned this as one of the places to go if you have a clearance. And look at all the different companies that you can research and you can quote unquote follow them. So when something pops up, it pops into your inbox. They're all over the country. They're all over the world. Good to know about. All right, back to USA Jobs. I keep talking about this. Type in different words. Type in analyst. Type in writer. Talk, type in communication specialist. Type in investigative assistant and see what the qualifications are so that you can start, A, working on that skill set so that you can honestly put it on your resume or curricula vitae, and B, fill out that application. They've made it so much simpler. I don't know how many of you are on USA Jobs, but in fact, I saw three postings to give today for investigative analysis, two here, right here in my hometown, Long Beach, one in Tucson, and then, uh, let's see, Buffalo, uh, New Jersey. There were like five different investigative analysis, uh, investigative assistant positions open right now. All right, this is from Indeed.com. And look at all the librarian positions that are posted just a few days ago, all right? And what I'm trying to say is the translatable skills. Each one of these jobs has something in it that you have already done. So you do want to be gleaning through these so you know where you want to build. I know, for example, myself, I need to work on my statistics for some of the things that I want to do down the line. All right, transferable skills. I've been an analyst. I'm now a reports officer. I've been a yeoman. I'm a consultant. And the biggest difference about being an analyst vice being a librarian is it's less, I call it less warm and fuzzy. Like last night I spent four hours on the reference desk where I was answering the phone and dealing people with face to face. And all kinds from finding the children's book, you know, a biography of Frida Kahlo in the children's section to helping a woman who's a true crime junkie and, and everything in between. And I was face to face, on the phone, working with people, doing all kinds of things like this. That's the warm and fuzzy. You're not going to get that as an analyst, but you are going to get some very, very interesting assignments where you get to dig your teeth into these databases and find things that what I call the door kickers, the agents who are out there fighting the good fight with their, their hand on their sidearm, isn't that dramatic, um, aren't able to do. They just don't have the time, nor do they have your education and writing expertise. And you really want to, in your resume, in your curriculum vitae, play up that you're a problem solver, that you know how to write reports, that you know how to keep statistics, that you You've done, oops, typo, that you've done in, uh, interviews. You know, look for the silver lining in everything you've done. Don't sell yourself short. And here's what I come to, I talk about. Can't is a four letter word, and it is only acceptable in my book. <laughs> right, Nancy? It stands for courage, adventuresome, nerve, and tenacity. And with that, I'd like to entertain any questions. Hi, Virginia. This is Jill. And I do just have a question that could you talk a little bit more about really why you chose to go into the Navy? Because that's such a, it seems like it's such a big leap, a big step for somebody to take that on. So I'm just wondering why you even thought about that, how that even came up as an option for you, and what made you choose to go that direction? Absolutely. I had what nowadays people call a bucket list, <laughs> for the, those of you who saw the movie or read the book. Um, I had a list of things that I wanted to do with my life, including become a librarian. I started out wanting to be a ballerina, veterinarian, police officer. So you, you, those of you who saw my first slide, you'll see that I did the ballerina thing. 
and uh, going into supporting law enforcement. I've come pretty close to being a police officer, plus with the three years I spent patrolling with the guardian angels. One of the things I also wanted to do was through my life of community service was to serve my country at, on the national level. And I was getting pretty close to the age cutoff, which at the time was 34. Now because of concerns with uh, what's going on in the world, there's waivers. Uh, I hear that you can put an officer's package up to 50 years old now. Um, but at the time, in order to enter as an enlisted person in the Navy Reserve, it was 34. And um, I said, okay, I better do this or it's not going to happen. And I was talking to Army recruiters, and they kept telling me of all the things I chose to do, you can't do that, you're female. And I thought, well, there's a shocker. Um, you know, having the, <clears throat> the black belt and riding motorcycles and pretty much just being a tomboy. Yeah, a tomboy with three, three feet of hair, but still a tomboy. Um, I wanted to make a, a, a huge contribution, so I was talking to a friend and he said, you know, with what you do for libraries, you would be awesome, awesome doing intelligence work. And I said, what's that? And he said, I can't tell you. Um, so that's how uh, I ended up joining the Navy. They embraced my skill set. And, you know, it's always, <laughs> you're always going to gravitate towards somebody who welcomes you and it makes you feel wanted like the Navy did. Is that, that was sort of long-winded. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. That was great. Thanks so much for um, speaking to us. This information is great. Um, honestly, um, intelligence work and um, federal law enforcement was my first choice. And I got certified, and then it seemed like I couldn't get a job just because the market is so bad in California. So I just, I mean, I, I'm a law librarian now, and I'm working as a law librarian and finishing my degree, but I mean, I'd love to get that clearance and get the military experience, but I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm 38 right now, so I'm worried that I'm, um, that I've aged out, so I'm wondering if, you know, if, if that would still be possible, if, if you think that the age requirements are, are different, and that, do you think that I might still be able to apply at least through the armed forces, and then also, um, if you have any job, like advice about applying through USA Jobs, because it seems like the, I've applied for so many jobs as intelligence analyst, as intelligence specialist, as other things, and I never, I've never heard a word back from them ever. So I just wondered if you, what you think of that, about all that. Sorry about the long-winded questions. No worries whatsoever. I would be willing to work with you and some of the recruiters that I know on the Navy side, and I have friends in all the forces who, if you are interested in Army or Air Force or the Marines, in fact, I'm going to be in D.C. on the 18th for anybody who's going to be around. Um, one of the Marines I served with in Afghanistan is retiring that, that night, so um, I'm actually going to fly across the country. But I'm willing to work with anybody. Send me an email. I posted it. Um, if you're interested in a certain branch of the military and I can help you find out about the, if there's an age waiver, for your, the particular branch that you're interested in entering. And I can work with you also on how to use those key words so that you will pop to the top of the list on USA Jobs. One of the things that I learned from Andrea Davis is about Wordle and how if you can cut and paste a paragraph and put it in Wordle, the most frequently keyed off words are going to be the largest. And so remember, USA Jobs is computer driven. It's looking for certain words. So this is a way that you can use it to match to make sure that your curriculum vitae or the words that you're using on your application are going to pop to the top. I hope that makes sense. Thank you and thanks for all the excellent advice. It's just great. I really appreciate it. Virginia, this is Jill again. There's a question up here from, let me come up and get it, from Jerry. And Jerry's asking, it's on the chat box, how do you recommend transitioning from just straight up research to analysis? And he's asking, what specific skill set should be cultivated for analysis work? This is where the writing piece comes in. 
um, I'm thinking if you want to demonstrate that you can do the analysis, uh, work on getting some articles published, for example. Um, take a hot topic right now and show that you can write. Uh, I do a lot of writing as a reports officer. I was doing a lot of writing as a, an intelligence analyst and as a targeting analyst where I had to demonstrate that I could go into these various and sometimes disparate databases and put together a coherent written document that those who were subject matter experts agreed with my findings. Um, um, an example of uh, what I did when I was in Afghanistan is I would brief the, the commander where I was and you have to give an analysis based on this is what's happening here, what's happening there, this is what I foresee happening because of this. So you want to have something that you can point to. So start writing those papers. Um, if any of you are on LinkedIn, you can go to my my curriculum vitae and see that I, my types of writing that I've done. One of my specialties is in substance abuse prevention, intervention, and treatment. I've written a lot of articles on that sort of thing. So I could point to that to say, hey, you know what? I know how to do analysis. And that puts me ahead of the pack. I hope that helps. I do want to, uh, it just came to me. If you can volunteer, uh, inter somebody uh, early on said that they've done an internship with, I believe it was LAPD. You want to show that you've worked with uh, law enforcement agencies. But see if there's, um, depending on where you are, someone you can shadow. <laughs> I know they're doing the bring your child to work right now. You probably you know don't want to act like somebody's five-year-old. But you see what kinds of um, volunteers that you can use so that you can put that in your resume that you've actually done it. Again, go to USA Jobs and take a look at what they're asking for. Are you a good public speaker? Uh, you'll have to, a lot of times, well, in the group that I'm working with right now, the analysts have to take turns on presenting their findings every day. So it's also great for your um, interview. You know, you, you don't want to be nervous at your interview and you want to be smooth, you want to be polished. So do practice in front of a mirror, in front of your friends. Uh, you know, give them tomatoes ahead of time so they can throw at you. That way, when the actual interview happens, you're prepared. Uh, have them ask you off the wall questions so that you know how to deal with it. Um, you never know. I mean, I can remember, again, that colonel in Afghanistan turning to me with his stern, stern, scarred up Iraq veteran face and asking me some question. And I, I went deer in the headlights for a moment, but then I collected myself and I said, he does not scare me as much as three-year-olds at starting time. And I soldiered on, so to speak. I'd also like to ask, um, just to, I'm just trying to think of other questions that might help people either now or, or even further down the road. Um, I was actually interviewed for a couple of crime analyst positions, um, but I got put on wait lists because I was good, but I was just there were other people who had way more experience and knowledge and skill than I did, and so they got hired, and so I was getting processed through the background check, but it seemed to take forever. Do you know of any other ways apart from military that you can get a background check or, um, because it seems like it's just so highly valued that, you know, it, it seems to be really important. Many of the uh, contractor agencies, uh, I don't know if you're going the, the actual federal government employment route or if you're looking to become a contractor. Right now I'm a contractor and they were willing to carry my clearance and, and handle the renewal process. However, I'm still in the reserves, so it's going to be handled on the military side. That's another way to do it, is to get your foot in the door as a contractor. Um, so go to the clearjobs.com and a lot of them are, but another one is clear connections. And they, a lot of times, will say able to gain a security clearance. Um, so you're, you know, U.S. citizen, U.S. citizen, or able to, uh, you know, prove that you are eligible to work in the United States. Um, clean criminal record, and that does not include speeding tickets, thank goodness. Um, you know, things of this nature that will allow you to gain the clearance are very, very helpful.
And so, and you want to make sure that you have really good references lined up who know that the men in black or women in black are going to be knocking at the door to expedite the process. Oh, but, I, but it is true that uh, the military right now, um, I was talking to some of the others without military background, they said that due to uh, President Obama's, uh, his, his wanting to support the veterans coming home, that military experience right now in our current economic situation is putting um, those without military experience. So that's part of the reason why uh, it's harder to get a job in the federal government if you don't have military background. It's because the, the government is attempting to help our homeless and unemployed veterans. So I know it's kind of a catch-22. Let's see, I see we have a question. Oh, financial problems. You need to be honest. Uh, one of the things that I have shared with people when I've spoken at various ALA events is when I first entered the Navy, the reason why I went in as a yeoman right away and not as an intelligence specialist is because I had a divorce, a bankruptcy, and a foreclosure, recent, but I was honest about it. And they looked at my situation and they saw that it was a transitional, temporary, not the way I normally live my life. They understand that life happens. They want to know integrity-wise, are you going to tell the truth? So make sure you can document the, the whys and what have you. And life happens to everyone. So just because you've had some financial problems does, is not a bar to getting security clearance. Go ahead, Lori. Do you have a question? You could go ahead and pick up the mic. All right. Uh, well. Not to get all, you know, nine days of the condor about it, but what is there like, um, I guess if you're in going into like public or um, youth or academic or even corporate librarianship, um, there is sort of like a, a difference for intelligence. And so, um, you know, how, how much um, information are we, as librarians are, um, or analysts, um, responsible for it. I mean, is it really depending upon your level, the sensitivity of the information, and you know, how does it work? Basically, I guess the, the nuts and bolts. Great question. You will be you will be trained on uh, what it means by for official use only, what it means by need to know only. There are various clearance levels. Um, there's the, the confidential, secret, top secret, and then up to the things where if they told you you didn't implode on impact. Um, and not everybody needs to know. It's sort of like, I, I use my mother as an example. She always wants to know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Well, I understand she wants to know, but she doesn't need to know, and she really shouldn't know. So um, I just tell her I'll be back. Um, <laughs> not really. It's not that bad. As, and, and I was just telling someone yesterday, as a librarian, I get all the information that my patron needs, and I give it to them as quickly as I can in the best way I possibly can. Uh, yesterday, everything, like I was saying, from Frida Kahlo to true crime to pancreatitis, um, whereas as a reports officer, I need to know, I need to know, does that person have the appropriate clearance and why do they need to know it and how much of this do they need to know? But you will be schooled. You will be schooled to above your eyeballs. They're not just going to let you run free without guidance. You will be taking online courses to the nth degree. So to make sure there's not anything that we call stillage. So fret not, once you're in the door, you'll be trained. Uh, what are the key differences between being um, a reports officer and an intelligence analyst? I, I was familiar with intelligence analysts, not so much with a reports officer. I didn't know what, it, what the difference was until they told me you're a reports officer. I felt like um, I felt like you know the, the the fairy had hit me over the head with a wand. Um, what reports officers do is they take raw intelligence. Submit it most well in this case every time by a special agent, and they they we craft that into a standardized format, making sure that the report does not give away any information 
that's going to compromise the case. And so this is where we keep a lot of things confidential. And this is where your writing skills come into play. This is where your ability to draw from different databases comes into play because a lot of times the agents don't have time to research it. Not that we have a lot of time. We've got basically a 72-hour turnaround time. So that's what I, I like. I like, you know, as Nancy Paget knows, I like the, the pressure, the deadlines and things like that. 72 hours is not a lot of time to do the research and turn it around and get it up the chain of command. But what you're doing, again, is an, 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 an analyst might be working on a bunch of different cases and have more time. Reports officers, it's a tighter deadline. It's a more concise document that goes out to the community. So it's sort of like we do uh, cliff notes. Rather than writing a novel, we're writing the cliff notes. And for any of you who are writers, you know, a lot of times it's more difficult to write a short story than it is to write a novel. So it's the more concise uh, brevity that's going to go out into the field to, to alert other people that, hey, we have a possible situation, have a heads up on this. Sort of like that last night we, we had these people running around the library and breaking things. You know, so the, the brief memo goes out to let all the other librarians know that we have a possible situation versus a trend analysis that's going to be pages and pages long. Virginia, Nancy had asked a question um, a little way back on the chat about what are some of the courses that you recommend that students who are still in the library program that you'd recommend that they take? Collection development, um, any management classes that you can take. Um, let's see, why collection development? Because that shows that you can analyze the needs of your organization that you can analyze the needs of your patrons, that you know how to balance the budget versus what you know the wish list is for your particular library. Um, that you know that shows that you have those analytical skills. Management, um, you it shows that gives you the opportunity to again write that you can craft a product showing that you know how to take information from various sources and craft it into a cohesive, comprehensible document for distribution to whatever your audience is intended to be. So, and let's see what else. Um, I would take indexing. If your institution has cataloging, I, I, I cannot tell you how many times I sat in my cubicle overhearing my coworkers talk about well, we need to take all these things and get them into one database, one access or Excel spreadsheet so that we can find these things in the future. And I'm very obnoxious and I have my library raid jacket from upstart.com and I'll go, you mean a librarian? So, um, <laughs> yeah. so you want to take those indexing classes. They will come, they're, they're invaluable. Thank you very much. There's a couple more questions on the chat. Um, Tim asks a good question. He says, on USA Jobs, would you recommend using the default resume template or uploading a custom resume? I have a default, but I also have, depending on the job, I will make a custom and then make that one searchable for that particular job if I need to. Um, because the technical writer versus the investigative assistant versus the intelligence specialist versus the communication specialist. Um, or right now, let's see, DEA is looking for an investigative assistant in Tucson. You, you want to be able to say that I did transcription and sat in in interviews. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to say. Volunteer to sit in on employment interviews uh, because you want to be able to cite that as experience that you've sat in and that you've made an analysis, which is the helping make the, the, the hiring decision, right? You're analyzing your candidates, weighing them against each other, and coming forth with reasons that you could cite why this candidate was better than the other. All this is analysis. Think outside the box. Uh, I just want to throw that in there before I forgot. So I hope that, does that answer the question? Yep, that looks like that answered Tim's question. Um, someone else had a question on there about what is your, what's your next plan? What's the thing that you, uh, you're going to do next? Oh my 
goodness, isn't that awesome? Uh, well, what I'm doing for the Navy as its chief petty officer, right now I'm in charge of 757, depending on deployment, 7 to what, 15 uh, petty officers. And my primary goal is to train my replacement and bring the best of the best forward. And for those of you in the librarian profession, we know that that's what we do is we share our knowledge to make others better at what they do and set them up for success. And so that is the aspect of my Navy career right now. I'm, in, I'm, I'm promoted into management, darn it, um, is, to, is to help those up and coming reach their goal. So the problem with that is that if I do well at that, I'll get promoted again and become senior chief. And um, that's, not, that's not too bad an idea. I'm also looking at uh, perhaps going to the police academy and getting my post certification and becoming a reserve police officer. I could see that as something that I would want to do in my future. And I don't see that there's one of the, the that an age waiver is necessary. Because I really believe, I truly, truly believe and paying it forward to my community. I'll share something that my mother raised three of us. I'm the middle child. Um, she is a single parent. And uh, it was because people, librarians and teachers, took an interest in me that I am not a statistic, having been born in Compton. And you know, grown, my mother was a jumping gangster, for those of you who know what that means. For those of you who don't, it means that she was initiated by being beat up. And then because she survived it, she, she was accepted into the gang. And my mother decided she did not want her children to have that same life. So she moved us to Long Beach and made sure by saying to us every year after we graduated high school, what are you taking next semester? It was not, are you taking anything? It's, what are you taking? Again, can't is a four letter word. You will, you will continue to strive. So I'm thinking about as I, near the age of, I'll be 47 next month, who wants to party? Um, what else can I do to continue to contribute to my community? And I think being a reserve police officer would be fabulous. Virginia, I'm wondering, this is Jill again, if um, some of the positions that you've talked about, like intelligence analyst or the intelligence specialist um, or any research analyst, are those positions available through contract agencies or through the placement agencies that place people in government jobs or or are or are all of those directly um, regular kind of permanent or full-time jobs through the government that they'd find on USA jobs uh, rumor has it that the reports officer position of some of them are government some of them like myself are contractor that they are all going to be transitioned into government positions in the next two years. So those of us who are already doing the job and doing well are going to be the first up to be uh, transitioned into government positions. And going back to the investigative assistant positions today, I believe it was supporting the FBI. You would come in as a contractor with SAIC but that would give you the experience and the networking contacts to make the transition into the federal side of it. Did you say again the agency was called SAIC, is that what you said? And also, are there other uh, agencies that you would recommend? So I'm thinking in terms of people who are graduating uh, coming up this May or some of our uh, uh, recent grads that haven't found a position yet that they might go, oh, thank you, S-A-I-C, um, or that they might go through then an agency to kind of help get their foot in the door while maybe they're trying to still find something uh, full-time. S-A-I-C, yes, it's, uh, Sierra, Alpha, India, Charlie, S-A-I-C. And they do hire librarians, by the way. I've seen a number of postings for librarians through S-A-I-C and that would get you in the door with them, and then you could look for other things. And I do have a contact at SAIC for those of you who want to send me your resume. Um, let's see. Uh, you could 
start off with the contracting um, positions it would, to get the experience. Again, you want to be able to put on your curricula vitae or resume that you've done these things. Um, and then uh, LAC, Library Associates, for example, is really interested in working with federal positions. There are a number of library placement, uh, library placement agencies that are working with the federal government. Um, you can contact me or Nancy Fajay, and we can tell you more about that uh, to help you uh, get your foot in the door with those hiring agencies and help you work, tweak your resume so that you'll be uh, put higher up on the list for those positions. But yes, there are lots of, not lots, but there are several companies that are working with federal agencies employing librarians and uh, there was one that I, I spoke with last month they're based out of DC they just opened an office in San Diego so I stopped by and they said to me with your qualifications you could have a, a job in a heartbeat if you were in DC so that's another point I want to make can you relocate are you able to relocate long enough to get your foot in the door to think about that I mean I'm able to do it now last year I was not able to so again, can't is a four-letter word. Perhaps not right now, but perhaps next year you could take that job in Virginia to get your foot in the door so that when a position comes open in New Mexico, California, Washington State, Colorado, I see lots of positions in Colorado, you can, you'll be first up because you already have your foot in the door. About what your day-to-day -day, um job is like or even week to week I I know that I've heard that sometimes not only uh, special agents but say analysts as well get called in and they'll get called in and they'll spend one two three days there you know working stuff out uh, as needed would you say that that's part of your job as well I love my job um, on a normal week I will sit at my clean little cubicle uh, without the homeless guy or the, you know, the crazy person whispering at me, which, which is all very, you know, when I write my book one day, all of these stories, um, and I will work on trying to get in that 72-hour deadline, 72-hour deadline, at least three reports out per week. However, and I think it has to do with, again, I'm pretty good at talking to all kinds of different people and the agents feel comfortable. I'm, was approaching me and working on those people skills, practice, 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 that I get to, I get to go, in fact, tomorrow, I'm going to go to the downtown Los Angeles facility and I'm going to meet with a series of agents and they're going to tell me about what they're working on so that I can take notes, have that face time. I mean, how many of you, for instance, we're having this virtual session now, which is a fabulous opportunity that we can all over the globe we can have this interactive experience but how many truthfully would rather that we could be in a room together face to face talking it out the agents are very much like that and so tomorrow I'm going to go to downtown LA and meet with a series of agents to talk about their their cases and they're so excited about it they're so excited to have somebody who's willing to listen to them I am very good at the reference interview I'm very good at listening and giving the feedback and taking the notes and turning around and following up and letting them know this is where I am on your case. And they just, they, they know they can call me, they can email me and I'm going to have a status report for them and then I'm going to follow up on it and I get to go on, what else did I get to do? Oh, I got to sit in the corner during a series of interviews with persons of interest, shall we call them. So I'm getting all excited here. Uh, because the higher ups have seen my product and they trust me and they're giving me those extra duties to do which yeah it's a time suck but I'm so excited to have the, the opportunity and also I am I get to participate with the research analysts in their staff meeting and so I get to be in the loop on the big picture and know what's going on across the world and, and this, this, what we do so yes there are all kinds of opportunities. You don't just sit at the desk and bang out reports. Virginia, there was a, a, a chat message up a little ways back from Nancy that 
ask you to talk a little bit about your work with the Afghan women. That sounds pretty fascinating if you'd like to share any of that information with us. Oh, okay. So the, for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, Islam culture in Afghanistan, women traditionally are not permitted to work under certain, like Taliban regime. They could only go out in public with a male relative. This is a problem when your male relatives are dead or serving in the military or have fled the country because they don't want to be dead or serve in the military. How do you provide? Afghan families on average are seven people. Now, I have two cats right now. I can't imagine not being allowed to work, pay my mortgage, and feed my cat. So what the Afghan women I worked with, they're very brave. They actually had joined the Afghan National Army. And yes, they had to wear the headscarf. They were called nasty names because they did not, by certain fundamentalists, because they did not wear the burqa. But what they were doing was they were going out and gathering food, clothing, and medicine for the families of Afghan soldiers who were killed or wounded in action and therefore could no longer provide for their families. And so I was the point of contact at the base where I served Camp Black Horse in Afghanistan for people who decided because they wanted to be part of this effort to mail in clothes or even something like cooking oil. It, I tell people often the story about when I came back from Afghanistan, working as a branch manager, and one of my clerks saying to me, oh, look at this cute little crack. We could do this with the kids. You just fill a sock with beans or rice, and then you put googly eyes on it, and you, you make a little puppet. And I was staring at the sock going, do you know how many Afghan people that sock would fill, the rice in that sock would fill? Because I've had this experience of working with these Afghan women who are desperately scrounging for cooking oil and a bit of rice to see there's the seven people in their family. And I was really honored to be asked to work on that project by my predecessor, who now that we're back in the United States, she has entered nursing school. And she's gotten her, she's gotten her nursing uh, certification and she's working at a clinic in Billings, Montana. And she chose me, she handpicked me to be her successor because she said, I know you're gonna do a good job because you care. Thanks for sharing that. That's an amazing, amazing story that you have to share and I'm sure there's lots more like that. Um, we're starting to get close to the end, so I'm hoping people have a few more questions for you. Um, I have one question that I'm wondering, what, what one piece of advice would you give to students, these students who are still in library school, who will be graduating, who are still trying to figure out what it is they want to do and where they want to fit, what one piece of advice would you give to them? Other than my can't is a four letter word. And <laughs> follow your passion. <laughs> I would say, oh, I know exactly. The same advice my mother gave me. You can do it. You can do anything you want. If you really want to do it, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. But you can do it. And if your heart is in the right place, it will happen. And never forget that. Mika. Thank you. I was actually writing that down just so I wouldn't forget it. So we have about six more minutes. Um, let's see if anybody has anything else or we can always just wrap up a little bit. Looks like there's, there's a comment on here. Um, no more questions, but definitely would like to send their resume to you for input. We'd also like to ask you more about the Navy. For now, thanks for sharing. That gives us hope. So any last questions from anybody else? Um, Jamie, Jane? Nancy, anything else that you'd like to uh, ask Virginia that you think would be helpful for our students to know? 
All right, Virginia, looks like that might be about it. Everybody's got a thank you. Wondering if you can meet with some people in Anaheim. Um, looks like we're good. So I'd like to thank you so much for your time. We really, really do appreciate it. This was super inspirational. This is, is recorded. It will be saved on our Colloquia site, and I will let you know once that link is up and ready to go. So thanks again very much. Good night, everyone. You are very welcome, and do let me know if anybody needs crash space. I live in Long Beach, which is about 20 miles from Anaheim.